good Monday evening. Welcome into Time Out here on TV and B. Jim Hennessy. And sit back, relax, because for the next 30 minutes, we have got a jam-packed show full of local sports. What's going on around the NHL, the AHL? So grab yourself a cozy chair and get ready for 30 minutes of some sporting action. First up, it is our game of the week, and it is a dandy. Fundy Minor Football Championship game played on Sunday afternoon at Shamrock Park. Beautiful day to hit the gridiron as two undefeated teams go head-to-head. -head. So here we see Simons relying heavily on the running game of Jeff Thomas, who scored the touchdown on Simons' first possession of the game. Here you see him picking up some major yardage, and he will go on to score the second touchdown of the game. Sweeping left and running into the end zone. Thomas with a great game on the gridiron down at Shamrock Park on this afternoon, and that gives Simons the early. 14-0 lead. Beautiful day for some football. Good crowd on hand. And it looked like Simons could have got away real early with this one. A 14-0 early lead. But Moncton calls time out to try to regroup here, and it seems to work. Because they've got to get back into this game quickly because they know that they cannot let Simons jump out to any more points. So here's the quarterback, Dennis Duquette, pitching to Jeff Wade for some major yardage. Rumbling down the sidelines. Breaking off a couple of tackles there. And he will get pushed out of bounds coming up here. The Simon's defense comes to the rescue because that easily could have been a six-point conversion. So you'll see Moncton here scoring their first touchdown of the game as Duquette pitches to Jeff Wade for some major yardage and two plays later Wade duplicates Thomas running to put the Junior Knights on the board. So Moncton is back into this football game after Simons jumped out to that early 14-0 lead. So Moncton will line up here to try to kick the extra two points. The kick is complete and the kick is good. And the fans on hand for Moncton are liking that. Scores now 14-8 Simons. Later in the second, Jeff Wade runs one into the end zone, but he'll have this called back on a very controversial holding penalty. Moncton feels that they're right back into this game and have tied things up, but the referee disagrees, and he'll call this play back. So Simon still holds on to that early 14-8 lead over Moncton. And Moncton doesn't let that face them too much, though. Duquette throws one into the steady hands of Rob Pelkey here in the end zone for the touchdown. Pelkey with a beautiful catch. Moncton celebrating on the sidelines and in the end zone. And they did like this game at 14 apiece. So Moncton right back into this game. You'll see the extra point here is blocked. So Moncton had a chance to grab the lead, but that is turned away by the Simons defense. Now here's an attempt by the Longhorns to go ahead at the end of the half, and it turns into a lame duck interception by Ryan Gauntz. So the score at halftime is Simons 14 and Moncton 14. Two undefeated teams looking to lock up this championship. Second half now, the Longhorns will go long with this touchdown pass to Jeff Thomas who simply had an outstanding game. Thomas with a great turnaround spin move, and he's into the end zone. So Simons recaptures the lead coming out early in the second half. Now the extra point is blocked here. So the lead is now 2014 Simons. Moncton continues to threaten with his third down pass, but the ball is fumbled. It's an out-of-bounds possession, so that means the ball will go back to Simons. Three minutes left in the game. Junior Knights make an important first down here inside the Longhorns' 10-yard line. So Moncton storming back late in this game. It is now first and goal for Moncton. And they've got the tape measure out, making sure that the first down is good. They signal for it. And the drive continues for Moncton. So it's now first and goal for Moncton. Quarterback Dan Duquette lining up here. And he will be the major playmaker in this play as he runs in the tying touchdown. To the delight of the Moncton fans and the Moncton players. So 
this ball game is all tied up now. With just moments left down at Shamrock Park on a beautiful sun-filled Sunday afternoon. So the ensuing play, no question about it, it's the most important play of the year, and Rob Pelkey is all alone in the end zone. He'll pick up the extra point. Where was the Simons defense on that one? So Moncton holds off a late Simons drive, and they will take the win by a single point. You'll see Duquette here. He'll just ice the play, try to run out the clock. And Moncton has captured the Funday Minor Football Championship and a great game, two undefeated teams down at Shamrock Park yesterday afternoon. So following the game, our cameras caught up with a few of the Moncton winning players, and they had this to say. I'm speaking now with uh, Danny Duquette and Jeff Wade, uh, the Moncton Knights. An excellent game today, guys. You both, uh, Simons and yourselves, came into the season undefeated. Uh, what were you expecting when you came into the game today? Um, we really didn't know much. We just seen a tape once of the team. We didn't know what to expect really at all. Never played them before, so. And tie game at halftime. Uh, what did the coaches say? What motivated you at halftime? And you came back from an early setback. And uh, what coaches say at halftime? Well, we just had to realize that it was our last game, and we had to get in everything we had to like win. And really, we deserved it through the season. We really worked hard, and we had to. The coaches just kept telling us, stressing that it's our last chance to make something happen of, our, of us. Okay. Well, thanks very much, gentlemen. So there you have it, the Moncton Junior Knights capture the Funday Minor Football Championship over the Simons Longhorns yesterday afternoon down at Shamrock Park. So congratulations to the boys from the Hub City. A nice game played and congratulations goes out to the Simons team as well on their undefeated season and a nice drive in the championship game yesterday afternoon. Coming back, we'll have some more sports to talk about, so don't go far. said about New Brunswick sports and you can catch up on the latest during Sports Monday. Call in with your comments starting at 8 p.m. on Channel 10 TV NB. A child's world. It's more than bricks and mortar, concrete and clay. It's also gossamer wings, mysterious creatures, a kingdom filled with beautiful princesses and fierce dragons. Through educational programs like Greenwing, DU Canada is helping kids experience the wondrous world of nature. A kingdom not of bricks and mortar, but living things. Nature's kingdom. DU Canada. Ducks and more. The Discovery Channel. The breathtaking beauty of nature. The adrenaline pumping thrill of adventure. The mind bending marvels of science. The very best of documentary programming and fascinating features. Asking the questions and uncovering the answers. Exploring the most unique natural habitats. Witnessing the world. The Discovery Channel. There you are. This is TVNB, the New Brunswick Channel. And welcome back into time out here on TVNB. Jim Hennessy joined the line by Dave Hanlon and Harold Nason, one of the AHL office officials down at Harbor Station. We're going to have a bit of a roundtable discussion here. We're going to be discussing the AHL Junior B Club here in town. And, of course, we can't go by it. It is the winter season in the NHL. Harold, nice to have you in. Thanks, Thanks for very much. By. Thanks for having me, Jim. 
Let's get a little bit. People have seen you down at the game. If they've ever been to a Flames game mm -hmm. at Harbor Station, they see you sitting up in the press box. I over St. Rice. What do you do? <laughs> well, we look after uh, the off-ice officials, look after everything off the ice at the AHL game. Uh, we uh, look after the penalty boxes, the uh, goal judges, and upstairs there's a crew of four of us work up there. We take care of all the uh, statistics of the game, mm -hmm. uh, from the scoring uh, to the penalty summaries, and we look after uh, plus, minus, and uh, uh, who's on the ice for certain goals and, and uh, what type of goals they are. They're all put on a sheet and uh, tabulated and sent off to Springfield at the end of every game. So obviously, I mean, it's a great job because you get to get into the hockey games well, and see it. every game. Mm -hmm. But there's also a job to do as well. Well, there is. It's an important job. I mean, we're uh, appointed by the league uh, to look after uh, an important aspect of the game. The statistics are very important to, to the players because uh, uh, the, the numbers help them move up, help them negotiate contracts further down the line. Sure. So it's important to be accurate and uh, to uh, to be right on for for these people because they depend on us for it. And we have to add that a streak of yours came to a close, effective last Friday night. <laughs> yeah, 260 some odd games uh, I'd worked. I decided it's time to take the night off. I took my little fellow Cody down and uh, we just had a blast. But, but he was still at the game, folks. I was a indeed. Yeah. De a dedicated Flames fan right to the end. <laughs> and right back at it again Saturday night. That's fabulous. Let's yeah. talk about the Flames a little bit. Dave, we'll jump over to you. Uh, I mean, this team is off to a phenomenal start, 20 points. They lead the AHL. Uh, I don't think anybody expected this, especially after the year they had last year, one game away from winning the entire ball of wax, as it's called. Uh, are you surprised with the start that this team's off to? Uh, not really. No, not after last year's showing. I mean, uh, they showed really, really strong um, offense and defense last year. It's a, you know, it's a shame down in Philadelphia that they couldn't pull off that last game. It was such a, a basic swamp. Mm -hmm. um, this year, it's it's looking like the old team from last year. I mean, even some of the old players are coming back, too. Sure. I mean, they got uh, Rocky, um, St. Louis is back Martin. now, yeah. Don McKelly. Uh, Don McKelly, Landry's still here, you know, and a uh, bunch, a couple of new ones like Clark and all that. They're, uh, you know, the scoring's coming up really well, and these guys are doing fantastic. No question. They take three out of four possible points, or three out of possible five points. Mm -hmm. for Four points, yeah, I'll get sure, the math right here. Four, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Anyway, they take three out of possible four, and that seems to be the pattern that they've fallen into, and it's a pretty good pattern. Well, they've got a lot of offense. In fact, uh, this year's crop of rookies is probably, over the six years, the deepest and strongest group of first-year players we've had. We've got some pretty good first-year players here. Chris Clark, Ronald Petrovicki, uh, Eric Healy. Um, I know I'm going to miss a few. Daryl Scoville. Uh, mm. And even Igor, Igor Karpenko, who was here briefly last year sure. on an emergency basis, have all filled in, and uh, they're doing a great job. They're blending in with uh, the high-powered returnees, Tom McKelly, Landry, uh, guys like that, and it's, it's, it's really going well. I think it's a little bit more than what we expected at this point. No question. Rick mm -hmm. Vive, I'll get your feelings on that, him, gentlemen. Rick Vive is, is just, he's the people's coach. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, all yeah, the coaches definitely. that have been in here have been great guys, very professional. But uh, Rick seems to have that feel for the people, and uh, he makes everybody feel really comfortable and at home in the arena. Sean I mean, I've, I've, even, I've even seen him take the time out to talk to, uh, you know, turn around and talk to a fan. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah. 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 And most, much most coaches people. won't do that. And that's what you need. I mean, you know, I mean, let's not, you know, kid anybody here. Mm -hmm. Harold, you're at most of the games. Yeah. Dave, you're at, I mean, pretty much most of the games. I am myself. Uh, I mean, you know, there's a lot of empty seats this year. So, I mean, you've got to have people that are on the team in that position where they will stop walking through the skywalk, coming through Brunswick Square, whatever, to stop and say hello. Well, yeah, the fact of the matter is, is it's a it's a cyclical thing, the American Hockey League, and we're into our sixth year, and if everybody knows the, the old cliche, the honeymoon's over. Sure. And uh, you've got to work for your fans now. But I, I think that people are starting to look and recognize this team as being a team that's going to maybe go somewhere down the line. And I think after Christmas, you'll see the uh, attendance will start to pick up because people will have a lot of obligations out of the way. There'll be a little bit more. For your recreation cash to uh, sure. starting to pick up now. There I mean, it is. You, yeah. you, look at, you look at the first game of the season, yeah. uh, the amount of people that were there, mm -hmm. and you look at like, for instance, uh, Saturday night's game. Sure. And uh, there was about a thousand, roughly a thousand more people there mm -hmm. than there was in the opening game. Oh sure. You know, so let's get back on the ice. Sean Sebastian Giguere, of course, he gets called up. Kenny Riggett, his back is thrown out of whack again yeah. after that win and beautiful win in Detroit that Calgary put up. Mm -hmm. Can this team, I mean, obviously they proved it over the weekend, but I mean, how big of a hole 
do they have to fill? I mean, Karpenko's been playing great, but I mean, they were saying, you know, she, they wanted Shiger to play 65 games this year. Not that many circumstances dictate that he has to go up with the big club, but Matt Eisler, uh, graduate of the University of Notre Dame, mm -hmm. we just called up from Johnstown, has uh, filled in great. He played last night and uh, played admirably. And, uh, win. Sure. And it was a uh, good job. Absolutely. Um, as far as Karpenko goes, um, a lot of people had a huge aspects for him this year. Um, I know there were, there's a few disappointed fans out there from his uh, first couple of showings. Um, you know, well, I've heard he, a couple people well, call the guy, him the guy, comes, the guy comes out of nowhere last year, exactly. and he gets, and he you know, out of three games, he gets two shutouts yeah. and gives up one goal in the third game. Exactly. He was but Superman for us last ab year. Absolutely. I so, mean, I, he was better than Moss and Giguer at that time. Yeah. I mean, sure. uh, but the fact of the matter is, is the Moss and Giguer were the contract players, and that's the mm -hmm. way that goes. It's nice to have him on board this year. Oh, absolutely. And I think he recognizes his role as a backup to uh, Jean Sebastian. And he'll uh, he'll give he'll be he'll answer the bell whenever you need him. Oh, no yeah. question, no question. Yeah. Let's flip over to the NHL. Let's uh, dive into the rule changes that they've implemented so far this year. Two-man referee system. What do you think, guys? <clears throat> Who I, wants I, to jump on this? I, I, I've, I've watched a couple of games on on television with the two-man uh, referees, and I really haven't seen a big difference. They say that the, the, there's more flow to the game, and the games are uh, a little bit shorter uh, in time mm -hmm. stature with the two uh, referees, and they say it's going to help the referees prolong their careers because they're uh, uh, only going to have to skate, I think it was 7.1 or 2 miles as opposed to the 15 that they would normally do. This guy does his homework. Yeah. I, like, I like bringing that. we got to have you back in. <laughs> there you go. In a little trivia you pick up listening to, uh, to listen to the different things. Sure. But, but as, as someone touched on uh, another show we do here on TVNB, um, a couple weeks ago they did a full show on that. Mm -hmm. um, with two referees in the, in the game, there's going to be more time for them arguing back and forth. Well, what was the call? Well, the call was this. You know, well, I don't think so. Well, I, I think it gets back more to the fact that, uh, I mean, we're getting back to when they first brought back the instant replay. You've got that, you know, inch of a blade in the crease. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, instant replay. Do you agree? Take it out, leave it alone, let the referees do their job, or do we waste 10 minutes going upstairs rewinding the tape? Well, I'm a purist. I, 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 my, my personal belief is you should let the uh, game be decided on the ice by the yeah. officials. Once I agree. You, once the whistle's blown, if you make a mistake, go. you make a mistake. I mean, that's only natural. Sure. I worked as a, as a softball umpire for a number of years as well, and believe me, you miss calls, and then, but you go on with it. I mean, you, sure. you do the best you can to, uh, to make sure that you don't do it again, but I mean, that happens. And, it's part. It's part of the game. It becomes it's a crutch too. Sure. I mean, a lot of a lot of people are, you know, the controversial call. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll sit there. We'll play the instant replay back. You know, sure. And, you know, it becomes a big crutch. Yeah. So what's what's going on in the NHL? I mean, uh, the, the the teams wanted. Uh, Gary Bettman stood on his soapbox as he normally does before the season gets underway and says he wants more goals scored. And we've seen just as many shutouts or maybe a few more at this time of the year last year as we've seen this season. So what's the problem? I mean, he's put in the two referees, made some more room behind the nets, and now all of a sudden, you know, no more goals are being scored. I mean, they had a scoreless tie, uh, Pittsburgh, and I uh, can't remember who it was Boston. over the weekend. Yesterday. Exactly, Boston. yeah. Pittsburgh yesterday. And, uh, and the fact is they, they've tightened up on the, on the uh, goaltender's equipment. They've uh, taken a lot of the cheek pads out, such mm -hmm. like. But the, it's, it, they're on pace right now to... Uh, uh, record uh, somewhere 230, 240 shutouts at that's this what, pace. That's what I heard. And, yeah. the, uh, and the NHL record was just set past this past year at 120 some. Mm -hmm. So this it's it's ridiculous. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's not what the Poolies want to see. Absolutely you not. Know? <laughs> not his a whole words lot of at this point. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. sure. And again, and last year they tried out all these different rules. Um, you know, the goalie wasn't allowed to go behind the, mm -hmm. the line. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the different rules like that. Who's to say they're not going to implement them later on in the year? Sure. Let's yeah. jump to baseball here for a minute because I know you've umpired a few games. You enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. Dave, you enjoy mm -hmm. baseball. Mike Piazza signs for oodles, 90 plus right, million right. dollars. I mean, uh, you know, I, I just continue to shake my head. We've talked about this on numerous amounts of occasions. I don't understand w where the logic is or where the thinking is of the owners that, you know, yeah, let's give him a contract. I mean, you know, if this guy wants to play, there's plenty of people behind him that I'm sure would. Now, I'm not taking anything away thing from Piazza. Hmm. Fabulous player, all-star catcher, you know, but $90 million. Is anybody worth that kind of cash? Well, uh, the thing is, I mean, you're going to pay him $90. Where, does, where do you pay the next super catcher who comes along? Where do you get the next? the next superstar who comes along, where does it end? Mm -hmm. um, it, you're pricing the average fan out of the game. You've, in fact, you've already priced the average fan okay. out of the game. Sure. Easy. Where is it going to go from here? Are you mm -hmm. going to have uh, just teams in the mega cities uh, run by corporations? It, it's really, it's getting, it's getting out of control. Is your kid going to be able to go see a ball well, game that, or a uh, hockey game? Fact of the matter, that's exactly that's yeah. where it's going right now. I mean, you're talking $200 for a family of three or four 
to go to a professional game in, a, in any one of the major cities. And we won't even talk about the NBA. No. <laughs> well, I mean, well, let's talk about the NBA. Well, you've, you've got the boys on strike. Uh, the first half of the season has been totally obliterated. Uh, one of the big stickling points it comes back to is money. Of course, it's the almighty dollar. Yeah. Uh, Jordan says that uh, he won't play in Chicago for less than $35 million for one season. No question, not taking anything away from Michael and what he's done for the game of basketball, elevated it to a new height. I know it's an old cliche when you talk about Mike, but is this guy worth $35 million to play one year, you know? Well, I suppose if anybody in professional sports is worth that kind of money, it would be a Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. By the way, they're not, they're not on strike. They're being locked out by the owners, too, right. so that the owners can try to come to grips mm -hmm. with uh, these, just these escalating price uh, and these escalating salaries. And I think they've created their own the monster, and now they're trying to, to rein it, reel it in. But you look a few years back, a guy like Kevin Garnett, when he gets drafted, never played a professional That's basketball game in his yeah. life, and he signs for a hundred plus million dollars mm -hmm. for over what was it, seven, almost ten year yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's, a, that's a little too much. You know, a little too much. And then and then you got the guys. Well, I mean, like you said, Michael Jordan's up for however much mm -hmm. millions you said. And then you get the guys on his team. There's going to be a little animosity there. I oh, mean, sure. Scottie Pippen is just as good as Michael Jordan. Well, I don't know if he's just as good. Just as but good. He's up yeah. there. He's up there with them. They complement each other. Oh, well, definitely, sure. definitely. And then you got Dennis Rodman. I mean, he's a crowd drawer, mm -hmm. no matter what. So what are they going to do? Turn it around so that um, the peop the best clowns in the game are going to get the most money, or <laughs> the, the guys who draw the guy who draws the most fans in. I mean, well, that's what it boils down to, though, doesn't it? I mean, uh, you look at baseball, a guy like Albert Bell, uh, you know, whenever he's coming out of court, the cameras are surrounding him. I mean, you know, and it, it puts people in the seats, whether we like to admit it or not. I mean, these people are, you know, we have a habit of calling them kooks, uh, you know, freaks, whatever you want to call them. But, I mean, these people bring people to the ballparks, to the NBA hardwood, to the hockey arenas. Well, who's the huge draw at Harbor Station? Rocks the Rocky man. Thompson. Rocky Thompson. Barry Nyker when he was... Yeah. Barry, yeah. When he was doing his Barry thing. was huge. Okay. Sure. You know, and I mean, that's what people want to see. They want to come and be entertained. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, the prices and the, and the salaries are going so far out of whack that it's, it's, it's just getting beyond the, the possibility of the normal Joe. Sure. Yeah. Any big surprise in the NHL so far this year, guys? Are you surprised that a team may be lagging behind a little bit or a team that's excelled right? Colorado. I mean, it just comes right off the top of the hat. Yeah. I mean, what's up with Colorado? I mean, their defense... Two years ago, they were drinking the champagne uh, of the Holy Grail. And they're also, they're missing three key defensemen. Louis mm -hmm. Coop off free agent to Detroit and uh, Sanders Olsen is the holdout and Adam Foot out with the, I'm not sure if it's a hand or a foot, but I'm, I think, I think it's is, a hand. Yeah. And he said, I mean, that, uh, that, that, that's a, a lot of uh, defense gone, and, that, and Patrick Roy is not, uh, not up to snuff. Not St. Pat like he was a few years no, ago. Well, no. he's not in Montreal, so he's Roy now. <laughs> Dave, what do you think about, uh, I mean, Detroit? I mean, you look at the Red Wings, two-time defending Stanley Cup champions. They've fallen by the wayside a little bit here. Uh, Scotty Bowman's back in the fold, but uh, they just can't seem to win, of late, anyway. Right. Um, you know, it's it's hard to say what's going to go on with them. You know, it's 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 uh, more of an up and down situation with those guys. Um, mm -hmm. Then you look at uh, our own our home team. Uh, you know, Calgary. Sure. I mean, you got Flurry at the top. Big controversy about him. Then it drops off. Right is, he, is he gone before Christmas? Um, I mean, it's no mystery. They're trying to get rid of. They're him. trying. They're trying to package him and move him along. Sure. I think for the better for the betterment of the team, and it might be a good idea to move them along and bring in some uh, some players to complement these young guns. And they do have some good young guns. But you have to make sure you get somebody for them. That's the problem. That's the key right That's there. The they can't give this guy away. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Fleury's into his 11th, 12th season in the NHL. Obviously, you know, he's not up to what he used mm -hmm. to be, but he's still playing. He's off to a great start this year. That's so right. you can't give this guy away and say. See you later. That's okay, right. let's wrap things up here a little bit. NHL, who do you like, who don't you like, and who's your big surprise? Well, my big surprise, again, the disappointment is the Colorado Avalanche. I think the uh, surprise is the Tampa Bay Lightning, the way they've rebounded Absolutely. from their very from their early season woes. I mean, they're uh, they're doing real, real well now. The are out. All well, of a sudden, the they start winning. Are out. Jacques Demare has brought in Chuck, or, uh, Cliff Fletcher mm -hmm. to give him a hand, and uh, they can't go anywhere but up. Absolutely. And you know, hopefully things will work out for them because for, for the betterment of the league, you want a little more parity. Mm -hmm. You don't want a, a three or four at the top and a big drop off. Oh sure. Yeah. How's so. Montreal do? Montreal's there. They're I had, there. I, I mean, had to ask uh, you. well, we, you know, we love the Habs. Oh yes. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't see another Stanley Cup for a little bit. Okay, Dave. Who's your pick for the cup? 
Toronto. Toronto taking the lead. Leave it wow, at that. that came out of nowhere. Anyway, that's all the time. I can't believe it's gone by that fast. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in. It's been a pleasure, and we'll see you again next Monday night at 6 o'clock.